To be honest, I'm not really sure how to give the title to this video. There you go, I'll try to combine three chapters basically of Spain into this kind of like one single video. Whew. Right, so of course, I'll try my best. First of all, the idea about Reconquista. The, now, the idea about Reconquista, it begin with the Islamic invasion itself. If you remember the video that I made about Islam and also Muhammad, so there the follower of Muhammad expanding the teaching of Islam through military force all the way to Iberian Peninsula. Iberian Peninsula at that time were being occupied by the Visigoth, one of the barbarians that invading like the Roman Empire. They were settled there in the Iberian Peninsula and then they were being pushed back away by the Islamic invasions. Now these new masters of the Iberian Peninsula, they were known as the Umayyad dynasty. And they started somehow and they contribute somehow to what we call like the golden age of Islam. They also started also together in Caliphate in Baghdad, a period of a time known as the Golden Age of Islam. Now these Caliphates or these Islamic principalities, they were occupied most of the southern part of like Spain. Meanwhile, the northern part is still being occupied by the Christian Spanish kingdoms. Okay, it's still being it's still being controlled by the Spanish Christian kingdoms. However, the Spanish Christian kingdoms, they are not getting well against each other and then they were fighting against each other. They were not being cohesively enough to become one. Okay. So the constant conflict between the Spanish Christian kingdoms and the Umayyad Caliphate in the south, well, basically the Islam called that area as uh, Al-Andalus, okay? Um, and then the constant conflict, it was raging from the 8th century all the way to the 14th century. Of course, in between, there are no such thing as like, you know, the constant fight or the conflicts. And there's process of collaboration and exchanging cultures and diplomacy. But anyway, this Reconquista movement, now let's go back to the definition of like, what is Reconquista? Okay, the word Reconquista is a Spanish word. If it's being translated into English, then it should be become reconquer the process of reclaiming what should belongs to them something like that that is the idea that is the notion that this christian spanish kingdoms had at the time so ultimately this process of like Recon reconquista it happens in 1469 when queen isabel of castile one of the christian kingdom in the north one of the largest in fact and also a king ferdinand of aragon again one of the spanish christian kingdom there it was one of the largest also but well these two largest christian and spanish kingdoms they were being united in marriage of their king and also their queen king ferdinand of aragon and queen isabel of castile so because of that one now the christian kingdoms in the northern part of the iberian peninsula they were being unified now the process of reconquering the process of like reconquista of the entire iberian peninsula it finished when the Spanish Christian kingdoms, they managed to push this kind of like, you know, Islamic influence away from Spain. The last remaining city at the time was the Cordoba. And then somehow the city of Cordoba left you know, a very strong, rich cultures of Islam. This is, for example, the pictures, the Alhambra castles and also the mosque. Now there was Reconquista. Now the next part is like the Spanish Inquisition. So what is Inquisition? Now in this context, in the Spanish Inquisition, so basically it is the institution of the Catholic Church at that time formed to combat the heresy through trials and also investigations. How is that work? Let me give you guys the background. Now after the Reconquista, of course the remaining of populations in the South are mixed between the Islam population and also the Jew populations. The new Spanish royal, they do not want their population to be divided into kind of like multi-fractions because it might, you know, because it might create a rebellion in the future. It, it might create a separation attempt in the future. So therefore, so the government, they need to make sure everyone is having the same religion at that time, which is the Christian, okay, the, under the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, so what the government do at that time, they encouraging everyone, including these Muslims and also the Jew that who live in the Iberian Peninsula for so many generations to convert to Christianity. Now, everybody was being enforced to convert. However, though, because it's not that simple, 
many of this Muslim and also many of this Jew, they pretend to be converted to Christianity. But then again, behind the screen, when they were inside of their house and whatever, and when they were not being seen by the public, they were still practicing their religious duty. Of course, nothing can be hidden forever. And then, of course, the neighbors found out and what's going on, and it created disturbance among the community at that time. So therefore, the government, they start to arresting these people who are somehow, they pretend to be Christian, but they are, they are not. They were being labeled as a conversos, and then they will be extra harsh toward the conversos from the Jew because somehow, uh, one of the reasons is because somehow they were being considered to be as uh, parasites of the society, which is that is not true, okay? It's, it, it's just happened. It sadly happened. I mean, they were being persecuted by the locals, and then it created a jealousy anyway, because and they were being treated harshly by the authority. So what happened to these conversos that if they were being discovered that they are practicing or they were being accused, I mean they are practicing their religion secretly, these conversos were considered as a heresy. So these conversos, they were being treated as if they are heretics. So during those times, in the medieval time, in any part of the Europe, the punishment for heretics is, of course, death by fire. Now what happened then is something that kind of like very chaos because now everybody can accusing easily their neighbors. At that time it was a chaos and it was a time of terror because everyone can be wrongly accused as a conversos. And then what happened is like somehow the next day that you will see your neighbor will be kind of like somehow being arrested by the, by the authority and then they were being burned to death. Now, Witnessing like what's going on here is like very chaos now the church officials They decided to send like what we call the traveling judge Okay, the traveling judge or the traveling inquisitors now this traveling judge or the traveling inquisitors basically I mean mainly they were from the Dominican order They were traveling in they were traveling from one place to another place from one city to another city in Spain to have a what we call like the mobile the mobile trial what is mobile trial so they will have a trial and they will gather up all of the people who are being accused as a conversos and then they will investigate the church they will investigate and they will ask question whether these are truly christians or these are true like you know somehow practice heresy so the Inquisition it create uh, some kind of like, you know, misconceptions in the future known as a terror because now everybody can be accused and everybody can be arrested by the Inquisitors. Actually, it's not that simple. Now, these Inquisitors, what will they do is they will investigate, they will ask questions, they will interrogate to get the confession of the person, whether the person is true conversos or that person is like the true Christians. Now, regarding about the method, how they get the answer from the person who are being accused as a conversus is another thing. They were allowed to use form of a torture. Now, the form of a torture was a very popular practice were being done during the medieval time. They were using this kind of like strategy to get an information and they will torture the person. Now, regarding about the practice of the torture itself, the popular one is by laying on the rack and then they will be pulled by the, they will be pulled with some kind of like a leverage uh, on its on their limbs and on their arms and also in their limbs until they you know until it's really really painful and usually through that kind of process the person will confess the person will admit whatever things that you know he's trying to hold on to however under a strict regulation they may not bleed the person and then a doctor must be always be there make sure that the person who are being extracted the information are not physically physically damaged so yeah but anyway what i'm trying to say by the end of this kind of like torture session they will be slightly taller and slightly you know somehow have a longer arm and longer legs now let's just say if these inquisitors found out that there's this converse sauce there were being pretending to be a christian what would they do? Are they going to be sent right away into the fire? No, they won't. The inquisitors will give an opportunity for the person to repent, to say sorry. Now, if the person repent and like, you know, somehow written on some kind of like document witnessed by people and then that person is promised that somehow he will behave, he will not going to practice a false teaching. I mean, he will be accepted back into the society. And if he somehow in the future 
if he somehow in the future somehow relapse or doing it doing it all over again of course if they get caught then they will be surrendered back to the secular authority which is the government okay, well they will be punished accordingly which is death by fire that is the punishment for every heresies is it terrible still it is terrible Spanish Inquisition is terrible but is that it but is it like really really kind of like you know very very terrible not really the presence of the church inquisitors at a time trying to investigate further whether the person is being wrongly accused or the person is truly a heretics now the third topic of this video the spanish exploration there was this genuine sailor someone by the name of christopher columbus he believed that the world is round and then he believed and then he convinced that he can find another alternative route to go to India, the Spice Island. Little bit background, okay? At this moment, spice in Europe is considered to be very precious. I even heard like, you know, a fistful of uh, spice, a fistful of uh, nutmeg can give you a house. It can give you a property. So, spice were very, you know, spice were very useful in Europe to, as a medicine. During the Black Death, like, you know, and then and also during the Black Death, they believe that it can help them to prevent the black death and i guess your food will taste better if you add some spice in it so unfortunately the europeans they do not have an access to the spice because well yeah the spice itself it get they get it from they get it from far away land from india what they believe okay from far 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 east from the spice island but if you remember the chapters about the fall of constantinople at this moment the spice trade were being controlled by the ottoman turks and in the ottoman turks they were monopolized this kind of like you know practice the, the price of the spices it's already expensive now become more expensive therefore they desperately looking for another way or alternative to go get the spice they get addicted to the spice so for christopher columbus claim it was a big thing that you know he claimed that he can get the alternative to get the spice so he tried to convince everyone, he tried to get a sponsor, nobody, nobody believed in him. Until he spoke to Queen Isabel of Castile. He believed in Christopher Columbus and then he fully sponsored his expedition. He gave Christopher Columbus three ships and also the crew, Santa Maria, Pinta, and Nina. And they set sails across the Atlantic Oceans, going to the west. Okay, if you look at the map, they go to the west, right? But India is in the east, if you look kind of somehow on the world map here. Yeah, you have to go around the African continent though. Anyway, Christopher Columbus, he believed, as I said earlier, he believed that the world is round and then he will eventually will reach India if he travel to the West. Unfortunately, Christopher Columbus, he underestimated the size of the world. So the journey was very dangerous and then the journey, it's, it's full of uncertainty. I'm pretty sure like, you know, back in the head, I mean, I'm pretty sure in the back of the mind of uh, every all of the sailors who joining in this expedition, they thought that they will go over the edge of the world. Like, you know, they thought like somehow the world is flat and then like they will fall by the edge of the, you know, the oceans. But not with Christopher Columbus. Weeks become months and finally they found dry lands. Now, as Christopher Columbus and his crew arrived in this land, it turned out to be Bahama Islands and then Christopher Columbus just discovered a new continent that the European never knew about it. Well, maybe the Viking, yeah, they knew it, like somehow, but then again, the Viking did not settle down, if you remember Leif Erikson. Anyway, and then he named the native people there as a Indian because he thought that he discovered India. Only the difference is, this is not the India, India, according to, you know, but it's the native American Indian. So he was being confused there. So, with the founding of the New World by Christopher Columbus, it opens up another interesting chapter of history. It's a chapter of history that's full of tragic exploitation and also slavery and tears and blood. Anyway, with this discovery of the new continent, it enriched Spain even larger. Spain became like the largest empire at a time. Well, at least according to what they claim. And then this, the founding of this new continent, it gave them so many silver that basically it's just like you are having kind of like you know, a blank check in your bank account. With this amount of silvers that they extract from the new continent, 
it make it makes Spanish become it make the Spanish become an empire, very powerful empire in Europe. But of course, not so great with the native American Indians. Many of them they die because of the exploitation and also slavery and also disease. Yep. Anyway, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. God bless you guys all.